It is true that our God is able. Our God is able to do everything. This is a song by Ambawa Mary. This afternoon, I'm going to share something with you, which I've captioned it, having a backup plan. Do we normally plan to have a backup plan? Sometimes we do plan and plan very well. And things can go right, even though we don't have a backup plan. But the question is, is it good for us to have a backup plan? Of course, even if we come to the world of entrepreneurship or in business entities, a good manager, it's somebody who always plan and also plan to have a backup plan. So we have plan A, and also we have plan B. The idea of having a backup plan is because of unforeseen circumstances, because of contingencies. Sometimes you may plan and plan very well, thinking that everything shall go well for you. But because of circumstances that we cannot perceive prior to the immediate future, our most beautiful and well laid down plans normally go wrong. So when we have a backup plan, it helps to resolve some of these contingencies in life. So now the point is, backup plans are, are not supposed to be perfect as your plan A, because your plan A is what you really, really sat down, put on paper, and you thought that it is the best thing to do. So plan B is just to take care of what you have not perceived. That is the circumstances which may be beyond your control. Now let me give you a typical example from the Bible. In you know, Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talked about the 10 virgins. Five of them were wise and the other five, according to the Bible, were fools. And why were five virgins wise? Because they took oil in their lamps and they projected that there could be some unforeseen circumstances. So they took extra oil. But the other five, they didn't plan for circumstances that could be beyond their control. And according to the story, these five virgins who took extra oil were considered to be wise because there was something. The bridegroom tarried and their lambs started growing dim. But those who had extra oil were able to wait beyond the stipulated time. And this is what I'm talking about this afternoon, that sometimes in life, not even sometimes, always when we plan, we should plan and plan well. But at the same time, we need a backup plan. So when we talk of planning, we are talking of trying to put things in place in order to achieve our goal. You, you, are, you, you want to achieve something. You, you, want, to, you want to build something. You are moving ahead into the future. 
but you can't just move ahead into the future. You, you need to plan before you get there. It's like when you want to travel. At least, if you are going to spend about one week, you're going to need your clothes. You are going to eat. If you are not visiting a friend or a family member, obviously, you're going to need a hotel or a guest house. So you don't reach your destination before you start planning what kind of clothes I need or where I'm going to stay. In fact, you need to plan ahead the kind of clothes you are taking with you, how much you need to spend, the kind of hotel you need to do some kind of check or background check. So by the time you get to your destination, everything is well planned. So planning is a, a kind of a bridge that helps us to cross over to our destination. And the backup plan is to help us not to be stranded alongside what we have put before us. So the backup plan is, is like... Uh, something that come in to rescue us from some of these unforeseen circumstances. So this afternoon, what I am counseling you is to always have a backup plan because it will save us from some unprojected difficulties. Now, when we come into the Bible, According to the Bible, when you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, the Bible says God saw that, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. You know, when you read the Christian accounts in Genesis, the Bible always uses the phrase, and it was good. For instance, Let's read Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 6. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. Verse 7. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. Verse 8. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. Now you keep reading verse 9, and God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. Verse 10, God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. So we have this phrase, it was good, recurring in Genesis chapter 1. But when we got to Genesis 1.31, the Bible says it was very good. Meaning that creation was perfect. Everything that God created the plants, animals, waters, whatever you can think of in creation. The Bible says it was very good. God made human beings so perfect. God made us to reflect his image. God made us in his likeness for, for, for us to think and do our things like God. We were to live the way of God. But then we go to Genesis chapter 3 and we find a crisis. Humanity deviates from God's instruction and that brought about the human beings fall from all the glories of the Garden of Eden, from all this perfect state. So you continue reading and God had to expel man from the garden of Eden 
because he went contrary to his word. This is one of the saddest stories in the Bible. And then you go to Genesis chapter 4 and we find a brother killing a brother, meaning that the consequences of humanity's fall from this perfect state brought about chaos. It brought about hatred. It brought about all kind of manner of sin we could think of today. But God was such a loving God. You know, when we, we are talking about planners, today we can talk of a lot of good CEOs in this world, a lot of executive directors in this world. But God is the most excellent executive director and planner in the whole of the universe. Even though humanity fell from his order, God had a backup plan. And that backup plan was to reinstate, is to bring back humanity to himself. So in the plan of God, life in itself is cyclical. It goes, we were from God, we, we, we fell from him and now he's trying to restore us back to himself. So other than in some theologies and in some religion whereby when you die, um, everything is ended or you, you go through um, certain states and you, your soul travels uh, I mean, uh, certain places and whatever. It, it, according to the gospel, according to the Bible, God has revealed to humanity that life is cyclical. God created us. We came out of the hands of God and God is trying to restore us back to himself. And that is the good news. So you read John chapter 3, which is a very, very popular Bible text. John chapter 3, verses um, 16. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, Meaning that God loved this world. It is not a group of persons that God loved. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Now God made a provision for humanity that if man is to fall, this is my backup plan. This is what I must do to redeem him back to myself. So God gave his one and only son son he loved and he gave love always comes with giving if you say you love something there might there, there should be some action that follows it is not verbal it is not some kind of abstract um philosophy we, we see god loving and therefore he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life you know when god created humanity in the garden of eden man was not supposed to die because god said if you eat you shall die and as long as adam and eve were living without eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they were to live forever and ever and ever to glorify god so death was an accidental phenomena, something that penetrated into this kind of perfect state to thwart and to destroy everything. So God's purpose, God's backup plan is to restore us back to the kind of life we had in Eden. So whoever believes in the Son of God the man appointed by God. Now, one thing I want each and every one of us to understand is that the plan of salvation is not an initiative of humanity. It is God himself who initiated. It is God who saw that we need salvation. We didn't go to God to dialogue with him, to present something to him. For him to have mercy upon us. In fact, he is a merciful God. He is a loving God. He is a God 
who take proactive measures to approach humanity in order to save us, to bring us back to himself. And that is why I serve God. Because I don't need to please him. He loves me so much that he is willing to give his son to save my life. So God's backup plan was to send his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to save you and I. This afternoon, my message is very, very simple. God never left us in our domination. God intervened into our terrible situation. You know, just you can just imagine, you can just imagine in the Garden of Eden when God was calling Adam, saying, Adam, where are you? And the man that God created was running away from God. And this is the result of sin. God knew that when man fall from his instruction, fall from his commandment, he is going to run away. And this is what sin does to us. That is why our world, people are running away from God and they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to listen to God's word. Oh, God have mercy upon us. Sin separate us from God. Sin create a barricade, create a wall between us and God. Adam was created perfectly from a loving God, from the hands of a loving God. Now when God was calling his creature, Adam, the man that he created in his own likeness and image, Adam was fleeing away. He was running. He hid himself. Friends, we have to send the gospel to this world because this world is always hiding from God. We don't want to hear about this loving God. That is why we have a lot of atheists. That is why we have a, a lot of people who want to discover themselves without God. And they think that a belief in God is madness. Friend, it is not madness. We are made in the likeness and in the image of God to give him glory, to serve him, and to be his own. We are to have a relationship with God. Now, and, and Adam was running away. And God said, why? Who told you you are naked? And now the next scene we, we can see is God is chasing Adam and his wife from the Garden of Eden. Can you imagine that? Now they don't have access to this beautiful, perfect state. They don't have access to the tree of life. God even plays angels to guide the tree of life. Sin creates a barrier between us and God. Sin creates some kind of wall that do not help us to perceive all the goodies and the riches that come from God. My brother, my sister, God's backup plan is to bring down every wall that sin has created in this world god's backup plan is to restore humanity to the image of god god's backup plan is to destroy everything that sin has created in your life the smoking the drinking the vain life the murdering the stealing it is god's plan that all these things get broken down. And that is why Jesus Christ came to save us, to raise us from this kind of dungeon, this kind of prison that sin has put us in to place us on a right path to live according to the ways of God. So God's plan is to send us back 
that we can live a perfect life. We can live a life that pleases God and that set us free from all ills and evils of sin. And now, let's read something from John chapter 1. Such a beautiful rendition. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Then I'll read 14 and um, 12 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, Paul is giving a testimony about this appointed man of God for our salvation. That is, the Son of God. He said, He is the Word. And in, in the beginning, He was. And He was with God. So, when we talk of Jesus Christ, we are not talking about just a human being who was called like the prophets. Or like, like, like the Levite. Or like the priest. No, Jesus was before. He was there before. He was with God. And the Bible says, He was God. So the man that God appointed to save you and I was God. He was with God in the beginning. So Jesus Christ is the perfect witness of our predicament of our fall because he was there from the beginning during creation jesus christ was there during the creation of humanity he was there when adam and eve were fallen he was there when cain killed abel he was there all the sins that went on all all the iniquity of Man, during Noah's time, Jesus was there to witness. That is why he is a perfect savior to save us because he knows our condition. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Jesus Christ knows the thought of God because he is God. And nothing is hidden before him. That is why he is a perfect savior to, to, to judge us, to know what is going inside our heart. I want to tell you this afternoon that Jesus Christ knows your struggles. He knows what you are going through. Don't give up. Don't commit suicide. Don't worry so much because we have a God who knows what is going on in our hearts, in our lives. Don't let anybody judge you because God knows who you are now let's go to verse 12 yet to all who received him to those who believed in his name the Bible says he gave the right to become children of God this is one of the most beautiful verses in the bible that all those who received jesus christ all those who believed in his name god gave the right to become children of god some kind of if you want to adopt somebody who is not your son or your family member you undergo some processes some legal processes then they sign and the moment they sign it for you they give you the right the authentication for you to adopt the child for the child to be part of your family and this is the adoption that we have received that as many as those who believe in jesus christ they have the right the authentication to become a child of god when we fell from in the garden of Aiden, we fell from God. We sold our souls to Satan. We sold our souls to the world. Man began to live a kind of life without the talent from God. But God's backup plan through his son is to bring us back to be his children. And this kind of adoption, we don't need to do anything. We don't need to please God. We just have to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And there, right there, at that moment, 
we have the right to become children of God. Praise the Lord. This is such a good news. And, and, and I'm, so, I'm so glad, I'm so happy that I am a child of God. And I hope you too, you are a child of God. And if you have not believed in Jesus Christ yet, oh, this afternoon, I'm just appealing to you that God loves us so much. He created us. We fail. But his backup plan is to bring us back to himself. Why not believe in his son today? Because God wants to save you. Now, verse 14. As I was talking about the word, the word became flesh. And made his dwelling among us. God came down and lived among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only. Who came from the Father. Full of grace and truth. Jesus is full of grace and truth. You know it is, it is, it is through grace. That we come. To be children of God. The plan of salvation was founded on grace. That is the mercy and the love of God. So Jesus Christ, he grants us his grace. That is why we don't have to be so perfect to come to Jesus Christ. Because he is full of grace. Everything about Jesus is so gracious. Don't think of yourself that you are such a sinner who cannot come to Jesus Christ. You are beyond the limits of salvation. No, Jesus is full of grace. And when we say he is full of truth, we find it in John chapter 14. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth himself. He came to show us the way. He came to give us directions, guidance, how we can come to God. So if we need to, to, if we need something, if we have to understand something about God, we can find it in Christ. You remember Jesus Christ said in John chapter 4 that God is spirit and all those who worship him should worship him in truth and in spirit. It means we have not seen God before. We have, we have not touched him before. But Jesus came. He lived among us. And he showed us the Father. Because Jesus is full of grace and truth. He is the truth that set people free. That is why his teaching was so authoritative. It was so unique that the Pharisees and the Levites were so shocked. And people wondered that this man's teaching is different from the rabbis. Because he is full of truth and grace. I recommend Jesus Christ to you this afternoon. I lift him up into your life. Why not accept him today? Why not just give him a chance? Just give him a chance and have a dialogue with him. There is no sinner who is greater than the Savior Jesus Christ? And that is why he is capable and able to save everybody. Because for him to be a Savior, he does not condemn you. There is no sinner which is above him. Because he is the Savior and you are the sinner. And he is able to save you beyond what you can imagine. That is why I said, don't let anybody judge you. Don't let anybody put you down. That you are such a sinner. That you are lost forever. No. Jesus Christ is able to save you. Because he is a savior. A savior does not judge people. A savior who judges people. is not a savior. Because then what is your mission? A savior who condemns people. It's not a savior because how can you be a savior and condemn people? That is why Jesus does not condemn us. He came to save us. His primary duty, his primary work is salvation. That is why we call this concept salvation. That is God coming to live among us to help us to return back to God. Jesus does not condemn you. 
We have a lot of people when they find themselves entangled with a kind of sin, they say, no, now it is finished with me. God is punishing me. God does not punish you. You are just experiencing the consequences of sin. But the Savior is always around calling you, saying, come home, come back to your Father. I came to save you. That is why it is written in the Bible. Let's, let's do some reading. It is written in the Bible that Jesus Christ never came to judge the world. Let's read um, John chapter 3 verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. No. You know, sometimes people think Jesus Christ came and he brought the judgment of God. No. No. He brought the salvation of God unto us. The Bible is so clear that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. No. But what does the Bible say? But to save the world through him. Jesus came to save this world through himself, not through any other means, not through anybody. Jesus is not just a mere prophet. He's not just a mere teacher. Jesus Christ is a savior. He's God's unique son sent unto us that we may have salvation through him. That is why as Christians, we are to live our lives in Christ, not on Christ, not beside or behind him. We are to be inside him. Because God sent him that the world may be saved through him. He is the passage. He is the way in order to perceive who God really, really is. It is Jesus Christ alone who gives us a perfect image of God. If you want to know how, who God is, how he looks like, we can see it through Jesus Christ. His life of mercy, his life of grace, his loving, touching hand that touches People who are sick and they are healed. He healed those who were blind. Those who were hungry. Jesus Christ fed them. And that is what God does unto us. When Jesus Christ was feeding the 5,000, he was not sorting them out that you do not believe in me, so go. You are like this. No, he just fed them because they were hungry. When Jesus Christ was healing people, it was not like you are not an Israelite. You remember there was a woman whose daughter was possessed. He appro she approached Jesus Christ. She wasn't an Israelite. She wasn't a Jew. Jesus said, we don't give the food of the dogs, the, the food of human beings to dogs. But the woman said, but yes, but I know that, but I believe that even the dogs, they eat from the crumbs of the food and Jesus said your faith has saved you Jesus healed the daughter of this woman Jesus was not a man who was discriminating Jesus came to save everyone that is why I love to be a Christian that is why I love to follow Jesus Christ because there is no partiality in him there is no sorting out in him there is no sorting out in the salvation of god so through jesus christ we come to perceive who god really is when there is a rainfall it rains on everybody whether you are rich or poor whether you are a sinner or not a sinner god gives us rain he gives us sunlight there is no sunlight for the righteous and the sunlight for the for, for sinners no god gives to everybody god has given us a rich and fertile land he gave us natural resources god gave wisdom to everybody and that is what the concept of salvation is all about if god in christian can give good things to everybody irrespective of your background irrespective of your color irrespective of your sex irrespective of your moral stature if god can do that for us then we can understand the concept of salvation that god sent his son into the world to everybody he didn't make any sorting so we have to respond to this 
awesomeness of God. We need to respond to this provision of God and accept Jesus Christ and to walk with Him. This afternoon, I'm going to end here. God's backup plan is to take us back to himself. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you this Sunday as, as we, you contemplate and meditate upon these words. It is my prayer that the Holy Spirit of the Lord also touches you, so speak to you, so give you comfort, so make you so courageous to accept the salvation of God in your life. This morning, this um, afternoon, if you are going through a problem, maybe it is midnight somewhere, you can't even sleep. Maybe it is early in the morning somewhere, you can't even sleep. Something is troubling you in your life. I bring you the salvation of the Lord. I bring you the true liberational concept that you can ever encounter. And that is the salvation through Jesus Christ. Allow Jesus Christ into your life and all these shadows would be dispelled away. All these shackles that has put you into prison, they shall be broken away because Jesus Christ came to set at liberty those Satan has put in prison. I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you this bright afternoon and wherever you are. That may the Lord make you so strong. May the Lord help you to overcome all your problems. May the Lord help you to accept this backup plan of God. It was laid before the foundations of this world. The Bible testifies to it. The plan of salvation was not accidental. Our fall from God was accidental, but the plan of salvation wasn't accidental. It was willfully planned by God in order to give us another chance. Let me pray with you. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you for your wonderful grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your love. We thank you for everything. If we want to thank you, we can go on and on and on and it, it will never cease because you are such an awesome and a good God. You've done big things in our lives. You've done so many things that we cannot even recognize. But dear Lord, this afternoon, this morning, this midnight, this early morning, wherever my listeners are, I commit them into your hands that dear Lord, may you help them to understand that you love them so much. We have people who are struggling in this life. We have people who are going through challenges. Some want to break through in life. Some want to overcome sin. Some would like to rise from where they are. They want to worship you. They want to accept you. Some, because of their circumstances, they cannot come up to accept Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, may you help them. Touch them this Sunday. Please, feed them with your word. Those who are struggling with sin, we know sin dis destroys us. We know sin breaks everything between you and I. We know sin uh, creates a shadow in our lives. Please, may your light, which is Jesus Christ, enter into the life of my hearers. May you please descend, dear Lord, and touch somebody to understand that you love them so much. If somebody has not given himself or herself unto you, please, this hour, as he or she listens to you, may, may she or he come to understand this concept of salvation, this awesomeness of God, this great mercy and and grace of God which has come to humanity. And we have some who are going through physical problems. The, 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 their bills are a mountain. They cannot overcome them. It has even affected their spirituality. Oh dear Lord, I pray for them. Deliver them from this trouble. Some are struggling to break through in their businesses, their small trades. Oh dear Lord, help them to be strong and create opportunities for them. Some, uh, some do not have peace in their minds. Some do not have peace in their families. Their families are wrecking down. The devil has put his flag into their, into their families and there is confusion everywhere. Dear Lord, may you uproot any satanic elements in their family and put the banner of love and grace in their families. 
some are struggling to complete their education some are writing their exams oh dear lord we commit our world into your hands a world which is being besieged by terrorism may you please grant us hope may you please deliver us from from, from the hands of these ruthless people and dear lord help them to come to understand the concept of salvation we pray for terrorists this sunday that dear lord help them to, to to repent help them to come to understand the true gospel that set people free we commit our president and our world leaders into your hands that may, may you give them vision and direction take control of, of of their lives you have given us through your world in romans chapter 13 that all authority comes from thee so this authority that you've borrowed on for them to take care of us may them utilize it to foster the happiness of humanity and dear lord be with our world let thy salvation fill the surface of this world everywhere that missionaries pastors and evangelists are proclaiming this good news may you water it that it will grow in abundance may the gospel overcome every opposition may the gospel overcome every traditions of men may the gospel overcome and empower this world in such a way that this place will be a paradise this place will be filled with thy glory that one day when you shall come all of us would be saved to your glory we thank you we bless that holy name because you have listened to our prayers you have listened we know that you have listened because you said we should ask and it shall be given we should knock and the door would be open and we should seek and we shall find may you please help us this afternoon in the mighty name of, of our dear lord and savior jesus christ we have prayed Amen. May the Lord be with you and may the, may the Lord guide you in everything, give you the strength and give you the courage to overcome all your problems. Amen.